Ayan, hello, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, scientific students! Welcome to our science class! Ah, syempre, Ma'am Tintin, yeah. matagal natin itong pinag-isipan. Yes! Para naman hindi masyadong maumay ang mga bata ang ating sa mga anak sa boses natin, syempre nag-invite tayo ng isang expert na teacher pagdating sa astronomy. Yes! Oh, syempre, so, isang veterana! Mm -hmm. Syempre, siya ay ating co-teacher, kapatid. Co-teacher natin siya sa Finmayupang College for the Neta or sa PUCU or PUCU? Yes! Walang And, iba, kundi ang science teacher na si Ma'am Ginaline yeah. Yares. So everyone, for module 16, let us hear it from Ma'am Ginaline Yares. Good day students, welcome to module 16 in physical science. So here's the lesson title. Understanding our sun. And here's the lesson objective for this module. So at the end of this module, you should be able to relate the four subfields of physical science and, of course, discuss the interrelationship among the four areas of physical science. Okay, so to give a review about the sun, the sun is the star at the center of the solar system. It is a nearly perfect sphere of hot plasma with internal convective motion that generates a magnetic field via a dynamo process. It is by far the most important source of energy for life on Earth. Its diameter is about 1.39 million kilometers or that is equivalent to 864 miles or 109 times that of Earth, and its mass is about 330,000 times that of Earth. So it accounts for about 99.86% of the total mass of the solar system, and roughly three quarters of the sun's massive consists of hydrogen, which is 73%. The rest is mostly helium, which is 25%, with much smaller quantities of heavier elements, including the oxygen, the carbon, the neon, and of course, we have the iron. Okay, so we have here the life cycle of the sun. So as I have said in the previous lesson, the sun is not considered as a giant star. It is a, a yellow dwarf star. Okay, so we all know that if it's a dwarf star, It takes a years, or we have the years on how to, um, uh, on how to have a lifetime for that a specific star. Okay, so the sun, it follows also the life cycle we're in. It ends also like the other star. Okay, so just remember that the sun is about 4.6 billion years old, gods and the age of other objects in the solar system that form around the same time. And based on observation of the other stars, astronomers predict it will reach the end of its life in about another 10 billion years. Okay, so it's just only a prediction, uh, so you don't need to worry about uh, that thing. Okay, so here are the parts of the sun. We have the first here, the internal structure. We have the core, the radi uh, radiative zone, the convection zone. We also have the prominence, the coronal hole, the corona, the chromosphere, the flares or the uh, sun flares, the sun spots, the photosphere, and subsurface flows. Okay, so the, the sun is the most, or the following solar activities were in mostly are termed as, okay, the first one is we have the solar variation. So as you can see in this uh, right side of the of our presentation, it is the solar variation wherein it is the sum of all the periodic and aperiodic solar fluctuations. So it is typically referred to when the term solar activity is used unqualified. Okay, another is we have the sunspots. Okay, so the sunspots, these are the magnetic storms on the photosphere, which appear as dark areas. So these regularly appear and disappear in 11-year cycle. So these are magnetically activities regions whose vertical, vertical field lines bond to the conducting gas. So the gas, it flows along field line, but the field lines prohibit horizontal gas motion. Next is we have the solar flares. So these are spectacular discharges or 
of magnetic energy from the corona. So these charges send streams of protons and electrons outward into space. The solar flares can interrupt the communication network here on Earth. Okay, so another is we have the coronal mass ejections. So ito namang coronal mass ejection, these are explosion in the sun's corona that spew out solar particles and a lot of material is thrown here. Okay, and next is we have the solar wind. So these are the result of gas expansion in the corona and we have the solar prominences. These are storm of gas which erupt from the surface in the form of columns which either shoot outward into space or twist and loop back to the sun's surface. So to give you a further idea about uh, the inner and outer parts of the sun, let's have a video. At Kitt Peak Observatory in Arizona, solar astronomer Matt Penn studies this solar surface to discover how photons of light get trapped. There's a bunch of theories today, but hopefully we'll get some data. Using the McNath Pierce telescope, he focuses the sun's light to scan the photosphere in detail. So what we've got are a few small sunspots on the disk of the sun. We've got two sunspots, uh, two large ones. They're heading off to the edge of the sun, to the limb of the sun. But they're all accompanied by smaller sunspots, groups of smaller ones following them. Sunspots mark areas where light is trapped. So a sunspot forms a dark spot by removing energy from that part of the sun. It's blocking the convective flows that transport the heat and the light from inside the sun to space. And so what we see then is a cooler region that appears dark to us. A powerful force stops our photon dead in its tracks, preventing its light and energy from leaving the sun's surface. That force is magnetism. Sunspots take shape where intense magnetism from deep inside the sun blasts up through the photosphere. The magnetic fields are so strong that it actually stops the convective motion of hot inner material from flowing to the surface. So you actually get what looks like a cool spot on the surface of the sun. They can be huge, the largest over 10 times the size of Earth. Huge loops of magnetic energy arc out over the sunspots. Twisted and unstable, desperate to spew their energy, they create a magnetic bomb primed to explode. And so if one magnetic field with stored energy sees another magnetic field, those two look at each other and say, hey, if we connect, we can get rid of a lot of energy. They do so, they reconnect, wow. It's a huge explosion and we call it a solar flare. And this can be equivalent to millions of nuclear weapons exploding simultaneously. Solar flares erupt outwards into space at up to four and a half million miles an hour, releasing massive amounts of energy. Photons are the source of light and heat, but they also cause something far more destructive, the solar wind. As they reach the surface, photons heat up the outer layers of the sun, sending it hurtling around the star, creating extreme turbulence and intense shock waves. It's so violent, we can actually hear it. 
picked up by the orbiting SOHO satellite. This is the sound of the sun. The speeding gases also generate powerful magnetic fields. As the star rotates, the fields clash and burst through the surface. Giant magnetic loops erupt into space. Some are so large, the Earth could pass right through them with thousands of miles to spare. They are spectacular and they are deadly blasting a stream of electrical particles deep into space. This is the solar wind. It can damage spaceships and satellites, even put astronauts' lives in jeopardy. A solar prominence, also known as a filament when viewed against the solar disk, is a large, bright feature extending outward from the sun's surface. Prominences are anchored to the sun's surface in the photosphere and extend outwards into the sun's hot outer atmosphere called the corona. A prominence forms over time scales of about a day and stable prominences may persist in the corona for several months, looping hundreds of thousands of miles into space. Scientists are still researching how and why prominences are formed. The red glowing looped material is called plasma, a hot gas comprised of electrically charged hydrogen and helium. The prominence plasma flows along a tangled and twisted structure of magnetic fields generated by the sun's internal dynamo. An erupting prominence occurs when such a structure becomes unstable and bursts outward, releasing the plasma.